Hey, hey, we are back. Yes, after spending a month in Europe, here we are back in Australia. We talk a lot about our trip and some of the exciting news we had in our previous video that we released. So if you haven't seen that one, please make sure you watch it. So when we got back from Europe, we spent a week in Adelaide in a shed in the pouring rain working on this guy behind us. Now we're all done, back on the road, and we've just entered the Flinders Ranges, which is sort of the beginning of Outback Australia. Yeah, so it feels so good to be back in the bush. We can't wait to share the upcoming adventures with you. Tomorrow we'll take you along on the off-roading mission, so stick around. Good morning. All right, it is time to hit the track. So I'm going to pack up. This is our awesome campsite. We've done our off-road checks in the camper. Lock that up. And we are... Ready to head up. Let's do it. Bam, lock that up. All right, jump on in, Edge. It is so cold. <laughs> Man, not used to it after Spain. <laughs> I look like I'm going skiing. <laughs> wow. So much smoke. Doesn't like the cold diesel. You probably couldn't tell, but the air that you could hear, that was my hair right seat going back into position. Right, so while we wait for the mug to get to air pressure, I just thought I would show you very quickly what we get up to today. This is the track we're going to do. We are on Mernamora station, so that's something we don't usually do going to paid station and four drive track. But I did a little bit of research and look like quite a cool track. All right, so this is what we're going to do today. Are you ready, Chris? Ready to rock. I'm excited. Let's do it. Magic key. Nice.
All right, so as you see, we just opened and closed the gate. So we are on private property. This is where we got that key. We had to go to the station and we paid $55 to get access to this track, which is pretty cool. So there shouldn't be anyone else here. Most of the Flinders ranges actually belong to farmers and stations. So there's not many tracks that you can do just part of the national park. So this is why we have decided to tackle this track. We've just dropped our pressure to 40 uh, about, at the Yeah, about 40 on both front and rear because I don't see it being a traction issue at all. So no, as long as we don't get any rock fractures on the tires, <laughs> it should be absolutely fine. Yeah, we can't wait to tackle it. It's around 42 kilometers in total. So yeah, now that should be a nice day out. getting a little bit hairy. Awesome. Almost there. Got a little steep ascent coming up. Edge has just run off up a little hill to film. So nice getting back into the filming now. Yes, I'm on top of the hill. It goes downhill after. So continue on film you going down. And maybe actually it goes up again after. So if you want go up, go down, and then go up. Looks like Ange is going to have her uh, exercise in for this morning. All right, sounds good. So you'll film me from now, and uh, then I've got two more hills. Yeah, up, down, up, and you wait for me at the next up. Deal. All right, this will be cool. All right. So yeah, we didn't do any filming in Spain. We just had a, a rest from the filming. So now it's so nice to get back into it. All right. Four drive still on. Getting our first scratches on the new paintwork. Okay, second here. I can use the exhaust brake, which is nice. So I don't have to use the foot brake at all. And that means that I'll never get any wheel slippage. So that's quite nice. Oh, this is a fun track. This is cool. Gonna get some scratches though. Okay. 
Now we've got a nice steep hill coming up. Back out. One range on one side, the other range on the other side, and we can even see Bowser. Oh, yeah, he doesn't stand out as much as he used to now, so in a good way, I think. In a good <laughs> With way. the paint, like the shiny white, but we can still spot him for me. Wow, that was a steep climb to this little lookout, but definitely worth the view. Oh, wow, that's cool. And apparently we've done probably the hardest part of the trail, or at least like the steepest, where we had to engage four drive. A really nice track, really nice day and night sunny again. Yeah, a bit of cloud about, but it's it's not bad at all. <sighs> very nice. Still very chilly up here, but the sun's warm. Yeah. So that little walk was nice. Now we'll come back to the mall. We're probably gonna have an early lunch because we're not too sure there will be more spots along the track where we can stop safely and park on the side of the road. And this is what the aftermath of that first part of the track looks like. I don't know if you can, can tell, but yeah, we got some decent scratches on the track, which Chris surprisingly loves the look of it on the mug, kind of like blends it a little bit more. Me, not so much, but uh, we know that just with like a little sponge, we can just kind of clean them and they don't stand out as much. We'll do that later on. We don't need, don't need to do that, but at least no damage. The paint is still intact. That's the actual reason why we chose Raptor Coat. So, in that respect, really happy with it. All right, lunch time. Time for some wraps. Someone's not happy. Why is that? <laughs> My wraps suck. Not to self. Do not buy the cheapest wrap.
Well, it's been a much narrower and scratchier track than we realised. There's actually been a lot of overhanging branches, which we kind of asked about at the homestead, and they said there weren't really, but they must not quite realise. We just noticed we've shattered one of our acrylic windows, which we're really upset about. Looks like the weight of the canvas sort of shrugged into the side, and it's basically been pierced by a long, dead branch sticking out of a tree, which I hadn't noticed until it was too late. So we're not sure if it's gone through both layers of acrylic and that it's actually inside our house. We'll have to survey the damage when we park up. But yeah, that, that's, um, that's not very good news. So that means we're going to have to get a new window sent somehow. Which is a real shame. And that seems to be the weakest link of our whole setup, the exterior of the setup. So yeah, should have been putting the uh, canvas covers over that uh, Ian and Trish gave us. But we completely forgot. So uh, yeah, good times. All right, and we finished the four draft track. Here we are. So this was the range over there. We've driven all the way to the exit and set up our chairs. Now we got chips, dip, apple cider. <laughs> it's perfect, and the sun's out. Yay. Bowles is giving us a bit of a windbreak. Oh yeah, it's so much I'm gonna actually shelter here. So me? good. So the the station is just down below. We're not gonna go back yet. We'll probably chill here for a while because the viewpoint is spectacular. That's we so might good. even wait till sunset. Mm. Had a look at the window inside, it's not as bad as it looks on the outside. Yeah, There's news. still one layer that's not broken, <laughs> so we don't technically have to replace the window immediately, which is so that's so lucky. Cool. So fingers crossed on that one. Yeah. We were talking about buying the new series of these windows mm. which actually are tinted. Yeah. So we'll have a little bit of a discussion and see if it's in the budget if we just replace all of them at once. Because they're all scratched to hell now anyway. <laughs> but we've got those new covers that we can use. So if we buy the new ones, we'll have the tint and we can cover them up so that they're no longer scratched. And they'll be sparkly clean. Take care of them a bit better. So, so maybe it'll end up being a good thing. I don't know. Yeah. We'll look at the bright side. Yeah, I guess it's not as bad as we thought. So that's good. Um, yeah, so good way to end the day. We're just going to chill. Bowser crushed at it as, as always. It's actually the driver and the co-pilot that have the harder time. <laughs> Bowser's <laughs> just like, whatever. Just, <laughs> just point and shoot and I'm good. You got to do what you got to do. Could do with a bit of ladder. <laughs> a little bit dodgy. But it works. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. So first really nice sunset. Even though there are clouds actually, we've got a really nice light tonight. With all the birds in the background. This is what the owl back. It's probably the, one of the best part about it. So, just to show you the before Chris do these windows, this is what they look like. The scratches, probably can't really tell on the GoPro. And this is the one that has been broken. I'll show you on the inside as well. And this is the inside, so you can see this is here. But it's on the outer, kind of part of the double glaze that like Chris said. So, luckily we're not going to be cold inside. But... Good morning. Right, so we had a really nice quiet night's sleep here at the station again last night. Soon we're going to go off on a nice scenic drive and then probably do a bit of a hike today. The weather is beautiful. Just wanted to briefly go over some of the work that I did for that week after we got back from Spain. Darren helped me a huge amount on the main talk tube job, so thank you so much Darren for that because that was really freaking me out. We wired up on top of the roof the new front facing camera. So I had installed that before we went overseas, but then I hadn't actually wired it up. That was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. The camera system is 24 volt, but thankfully the camera can either be 12 or 24. Reason being, I didn't want to wire it down into the cab because there was no way that I was going to drill into the cab, into the back of it, and you would have seen wires everywhere. So I ended up running it down into our cabinet tree and plugging it into our 12 volt onboard Enerdrive system, and the camera works great. So we used that a little bit yesterday to see branches. Unfortunately, when we do see a branch, there's not a ton we can do about it, but at least we know if a big one is going to be too big for us to go under, and we'll 
have to back back out. So that's all nice and wired up. We also rotated the tires. So I just did a basic tire rotation. I basically just changed them from front to back. And that was because the front ones are wearing on the outer edge. They're wearing a lot more on this edge here because of the camber of these, the Unimog. They're designed with that camber. Oh, we just need to deal with this outer edge tire uh, on the front wearing down a lot faster. So I've swapped them to the back. These are the rear ones that have now come forward. And that was 10,000 kilometers on the tires. So uh, yeah, we'll probably do that every 10,000 Ks. So that was done. And then the huge main job, which has been stressing me out for a long time. And if you saw a few videos ago, I pulled out a rubber bellows on our torque tube, which is basically the output of the transfer case. And it was filled with oil. Now what it was is the there's two seals on the output of the transfer case and they can leak. Now the odd thing about the Unimog is that when you engage forward drive it puts a small amount of air pressure into the entire drive line and that's basically so the army could have stopped in a swamp for hours on end with the truck running and you would get no water ingress into the important components. But a slight issue of that is it's harder on seals. And if a seal is got a slight gap in it or whatever, it will start to push oil through. And I believe that's what had started happening. Now, there are two torque tubes. Within those torque tubes is, are the two drive shafts with giant uni joint on both ends. Impossible to film under there because it was really dark and a bit scary. But Darren and I basically used a chain ratchet to pull a torque tube, so if we're talking about the rear, we pull the whole rear axle back, make sure it's nice and safe, and then we get in with our fingers, which is dodgy ass, because there's this giant steel ball which encapsulates the uni joint, and then we have to unbolt the uni, pull the drive shaft off of the transfer case, and then pull the flange out of the transfer case. We used a slide hammer, and then replace the seal then get it to marry back up and then and there's and there's a whole bunch in that as well there's greasing and there was cleaning and the rear took the entire day the front was a bit faster but basically there was oil in both torque tubes and who knows how long that had been there for but I really wanted that to be stopped and now thankfully it has so now we can engage forward drive and we've got no oil leaking out of our transfer case because obviously that's a really big deal the transfer case is connected to the transmission it's the same What's oil we don't want to be losing that somewhere in the sure simpson desert so that's all sorted now we also greased the balls as well the two uh, balls on either end and uh so they don't squeak anymore which is always a good thing don't want squeaking balls yeah it's all it's all looking great now it basically showed that the uni joints are fine. It also enabled me to get a grease gun in there on the nipple on either uni joint and grease those because they're so hard to get to. I don't want to be doing that job ever again, ideally. So we got in there, got that done. Now we are ready to go. The only job I know of that needs doing on the truck at some point is our front portal seal. It is weeping a little bit, but it's an inner portal seal. So it is a massive job and I cannot do that on the side of the road. So uh, that'll be done sometime in the future. like me and hate catching the drone in the air and I just never do it because it's always the one like really helping me because I can't do it I just terrorize me but I quite like flying it I guess when it's not too bumpy on a sitting drone like this it's beautiful very nice light as well this morning so that was a nice little drone segment I hope and today I was much more prepared than yesterday all the batteries are charged which is good because when it's cold which I didn't realize we haven't been in cold weather for a long time the drone life battery it's so much less than normal so you constantly have to change battery to get footage so yesterday on the four drive truck I realized halfway through that all the drone batteries were not charged which was really annoying do you want to go in a camper to charge them so luckily we've got our EcoFlow unique here the Delta Max 2000 where I just grabbed the drone charger at the back put it here 
and while on the track I could actually charge a ton of batteries which is amazing especially when you need like a lot of them to film along the way so the unit is like just right here and it's tucked right like that and it doesn't move even when we go off-roading and even this drive which is quite bumpy it just doesn't move it's really good I guess backup for that so we're very happy with the unit in that respect so if you're interested as well of getting this unit, EcoFloor at the moment is doing a huge Prime Day sale. So we'll put the link in the description. So if you are considering getting one of those, now is definitely the time to do so because there are some huge discounts and that always help when you buy something like this. What a view. I'm just gonna close the door because it's actually freezing outside. <laughs> Ah, much better. And we don't even have the heater and we're nice and toasty in here. Mm, so good. Good in here. Yeah. Cook dinner soon. We had such a good day today. We did quite a nice hike, 14 kilometers. Rawson's Bluff. It was yeah. really cool. So, really nice hike. Yeah. yeah, beautiful views. It was chilly at the top, but it was well worth the hike. Yeah, if you're in the Flinders and you're after a good hike, it was a bit steep, but yeah, the view at the top, we got like the mm. drone up and all that was definitely worth this little hike so now we're just gonna yeah chill here tomorrow we are officially starting our exploration of the flinders ranges national park because this was not part of it yet so mm. we can't wait to see it more because this landscape is really appealing but tonight something quite special we've got actually 4g here in a camper which is very strange for this location yeah. where we are so we're gonna probably just chill i was just doing a bit of backup of our footage that we filmed the last few days maybe a little bit of editing but we're probably gonna watch some youtube tonight we're watching c90 adventures this is a funny bloke he's like a walking monty python skit and we got recommended his uh channel he hasn't been posting videos for a little while but some of his stuff's actually really cool to watch him traveling around the world we're watching one where he's in colombia let us know what is your favorite channel to watch yeah other Nova than the cultures. normal australian forward drive channel let us know if you've got a favorite channel that you watch it's a little bit different and we'll check it out yeah so this is us for today so thank you for tuning in for this i guess first episode back in the outback back on the road we're a little bit i guess rusty but we'll get back into the swing of things and hopefully you enjoy the upcoming adventures thanks so much for watching guys hope you're well we'll see you on the next one